because all jokes are offensive to someone. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the concept of making fun of somebody, specifically how you can make it work and some of the pitfalls that you're gonna face. There's no denying that this requires a lot of finesse. You're essentially insulting another person or group of people. So shockingly, you don't see a lot of comedians work it into their acts, with a couple of exceptions. Fat girls could talk about skinny girls all day long, but skinny girls can't talk about fat girls. Just, just me. Specifically, I wanna talk about how to make fun of critics. It's not super common because it's easy to come across as petty and difficult to extract a lot of value from. However, some people are able to navigate this web, most notably Tim Minchin. After he gets all the bears off stage that didn't dig on dancing, he brings the pace way down and really opens up about his insecurities regarding a negative review he's received in the past. And there was a review there that was one of the worst reviews of, of any review I've read of anything ever. <laughs> This one was particularly special because it was about me. I like this because you're getting the audience on your side and setting up the premise simultaneously. It's a great use of time. And as you listen to him, you hear him come to the conclusion that he needs to take the high road. I have to forgive this guy, you know? <laughs> the key here is coming across as honest. No one enjoys getting negative feedback and you need to play into that to be believable. Here's a counter example. And it's really qu quite well written also, which I love. He writes, there's a great deal of strutting in the special. Miller has a habit of demonstrating his intelligence, but it doesn't lead anywhere. <laughs> anywhere funny, that is. Both of these comedians establish a premise by Pretty lying good. to the audience. To make fun of a critic, you either need to pretend to agree with the critic or pretend to be vulnerable and then drop the other shoe. You can't come out swinging because this just immediately seems petty. The subtle difference here that kills TJ is that pretending to agree with the critic, I would argue, simply eventually seems petty. Because after all the talk about how you agree with the review, you wind up doing something similar to Miller. So I think it's, uh -huh. I think it's, I think it's possible that some people may not get the special. Uh -huh. There's just nowhere else to go. The major difference between the two sets is where our focus is drawn. We spend the first minute in Minchin's special talking about Tim Minchin, his insecurities, and his vulnerabilities. We spend the first minute in TJ's interview talking about Bruce, not TJ. That's why later, you don't care about him or his feelings. Since Tim takes the effort to make you care about him, when the other shoe does eventually drop, not only are you on his side, but the transition will also have greater impact. And I just want to clarify that all that petty stuff, you know, that we, we tend to obsess over, like who the reviewer was and all that, doesn't matter. This, this is a song about the notion of forgiveness. <laughs> it's called The Song for Phil Doust. Which is, again, a great use of time. You understand that he's going negative, and he's bitter about this, and he's a hypocrite. All in 10 seconds. I just wanna say Phil Doust, occasional Guardian newspaper journal oust, that it's been three years since you wrote it, and time is very healing. But I still wanna cut big chunks of flesh out of your stupid face and make your children watch while I force you to eat them. Yeah, I wanna make your children watch you eat your own face meat. You would expect a remark that extreme to be near the end of the song, but it's not. This is the beginning. Important rule. If you're gonna be a bear, be a grizzly. In this instance, it's a great strategy and something Minchin really takes to heart. La 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 la, I hope one of your family members dies, Phil. So maybe you should quit and get a job that you'd be better at, like killing yourself, you fucking cunt. Tra la 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 la, I hope something you love catches on fire, Phil. Ding he wraps it all up by re-emphasizing that he's a hypocrite, which bookends the song very well. Ding dang dong. I've written you this special song To show how far I've come along In my efforts to be more mature In the face of negative feedback You fucking poo face Minchin is able to break past the pitfalls of making one of his critics the butt of one of his jokes essentially by being a grizzly and taking the time to really grill Doust to such an extreme that his resentment and his bitterness become part of the joke. 
And that's the key. As the audience, we're assuming those negative emotions to be there. And as the performer, you need to respect that assumption. It is worth noting that this ridiculously over the top, musically intense dropping of the other shoe is Minchin's bread and butter. Jonathan, I wanna make love to ya. Oh, I see, I just wanna make a sweet love to ya. Just once, I wanna make a sweet love to ya. Sweet love to your wife. <laughs> so it's not surprising that he'd be one of the few comedians to figure this out. Hello, thanks for watching. I really enjoy making these videos, and if you enjoy watching them, please subscribe.